Well, it's a staple food around the world, estimated to be the number one seller across Australian supermarkets. Bananas are worth more than a billion dollars to the national economy. But could the banana as we know it effectively become extinct? Critical work is happening around the world to prevent the insidious threat of Panama disease from crippling the local industry and decimating global supplies. Joining me for more on this in Australia is Biosecurity Queensland's Panama TR4 program leader, Rhiannon Evans. Thanks very much for your time. For those that aren't aware of this, it's a Panama disease being going around for a long time, but this particular form has been decimating the Cavendish crop, which most people just know as a banana, and it's in Australia. So is it inevitable this is going to ultimately cripple our industry or can it be kept out of the farms? Uh, excellent question. Um, where I would start with that is that Queensland was, uh, we detected Panama disease in our commercial banana crops in 2015. And across seven years, through implementing really sound biosecurity practices, we have limited the spread of the disease. Uh, it is currently in six farms, which are all in very close proximity to, the, uh, to each other. So our, our biosecurity strategies that have been in place have really limited the ability for this disease to spread. And Queensland has in fact had one of the uh, most successful control and containment uh, efforts for this disease seen anywhere in the world. Yeah, so it's the other issue as well is ladyfingers are the other banana, I must profess to being a do prefer a lady finger, they're, they're susceptible to a different form of Panama disease. But the point is, right now, we don't have a backup, but something's being worked on. How is that work oh, progressing? Yes, absolutely. 96% uh, 90, of uh, bananas grown in Australia are in far north Queensland, and the large proportion of that is... <clears throat> is the Cavendish variety. You'll also find the ladyfingers are a very strong commercial crop in northern New South Wales. Now, science and research has been uh, very active in looking for resistant selections of both the Cavendish variety and uh, the ladyfinger variety. In uh, 2022, we in fact had identified six uh, goldfinger, subsets of goldfinger variety, <clears throat> which were accepted by consumers as um, a banana that they would choose to eat. It had all the qualities right. of the bananas that Cavendish have today. Um, and as a result, we're now looking at taking the value of those particular uh, varieties and species and looking at their agronomic production because not only do bananas need to be good to eat but they also need to be economically viable to produce. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I know for some as well there's an image problem. We're fussy about what we pick up out of the supermarket. We, we might be less fussy if there are no other bananas. What is that prospect? And if, if this really accelerated rapidly whilst there are options there you spoke about that we might have years even without anywhere near the access to bananas we have now. And they might go back to what they were many, many years ago where it was a luxury item. I guess if we were doing nothing, that has the potential to occur. But for the fact of the, the amount of national and international research that is going on in relation to this disease, not only in additional varieties of the um, different types of bananas, but also looking at the sustainability of the soil. What can we do in the microbiome to encourage organisms uh, to outcompete fusarium wilt? Um, so the likelihood of there being an eradication of Cavendish bananas is, I would suggest, highly unlikely. All right. Well, that's good news for those that uh, do enjoy the bananas. It's a lot of us and, of course, the farmers and the part it plays in the Australian economy. Rhiannon, thanks for your time today. Thank you.